You're listening to The Dental Guys, episode 44, Clorox Rocks. Get your Apex locators fired up this week, Dental Guys. We're continuing our guide to good endodontic therapy. This week, we discuss how to effectively establish patency, do irrigants really matter, and should you buy into some endo system to do better endodontic therapy? There is so much manure to clean out of these canals this week on The Dental Guys. Welcome to this week's episode of The Dental Guys. I'm John, The Dental Guy. And I'm Wes, The Dental Guy. And this is uh, kind of shot on location for Wes. And, uh, you know, this is not Wes, as you might notice. The You know, Wes's studio, studio number one, is is really pretty <laughs> nice. You know, I mean, he's got a nice studio. He's got all this fancy stuff in the background that makes you really look very professional. It looks very professional. But today, it looks like you're, it looks like you got, like, kicked into the bathroom or something yeah. i mean did you did someone did, did your wife kick you out of your room no. or what, what's going on and no. where are you no this is a good place john this is a good place i am as about as far north in the united states on the east coast as you can go um oh from my window looking out over this lake that i'm on i'm on i'm in vermont on lake champlain uh, um oh. <laughs> but uh um, that's great literally we could take a boat and go across the Canadian border and we would be arrested, but we don't go that far. Um, so what well, are you why doing am I there? up here? You know, well, I've been coming up here since I was 13. My dad's been coming up here since in the early eighties. Um, and we come up here and we large and smallmouth bass fish and, mm. uh, also catch, uh, Northern pike, musky, uh, pickerel, uh, occasional bowfin, um, and, uh, we've, we've, uh, definitely had a good week so far. We've got four more days of fishing. Usually we hit it hard in the morning, come in, have a snack. Uh, usually I go for an afternoon run and my dad takes a nap and then I come back and <laughs> we head back out around three o'clock and fish till dark. And, uh, but it's been a good Sweet. week. And, you know, the interesting thing is, is that it's been kind of hot and cold as far as like the fishing goes. I mean, like this morning we were just crushing it. You saw some of the pictures on Facebook. I, mean, I it's know, I know. It's envious. Catching some nice small mouth and then also some, some uh, musky. And then uh, this afternoon it just went dead. I mean, like there was nothing. I mean, we catch an occasional fish, but nothing major. And we were like, let's just hang it up. It was 730. So we come back. And my sister's up here with us, and uh, she goes out to the dock, and she's like, I'm seeing some big ones out here. She's, like, tossing, like, worms and not— So you've been out there for, like, hours oh, yeah. on yeah, she comes back and nothing. lands a massive largemouth <laughs> right off the dock. <laughs> and we should put a picture, maybe oh, a picture yeah. of that up Let's on the show. Let's throw it up right now. You know, here, here, I mean, here it is. It's awesome. We can maybe, maybe we can cut out your sister so she doesn't, you know, get upset I've got with a you. big picture of just the fish, so I'll throw that just up on the, the fish, screen. Just the fish, man. But, man it was so, a so meanwhile— so meanwhile, back at the office, you're, you're, having this, <laughs> you're having this great week of fishing and things are going great. Mm. And you want me to tell you what I'm doing this week? Because it's it's almost as good. It's almost as good as your week. This week, <laughs> our office made the software transition. Oh man! So last Friday, we talked about we this. had a trainer. We had a trainer come in. Yeah, we talked about this a little bit on the last show. We had a trainer come in from Open Dental and I flew in from Oregon, Jenny. And, uh, she was great. She was, what a great day of training. I mean, she rocked it. Did Jenny have a gun? Uh, very- <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, we, we, we want it. We want one this week. I'll tell you oh, that. Oh man. How's but, that so going? She, so Jenny came in, she did a great job, but you know, no matter how good of a job Jenny does on Friday, <laughs> you know, when you come in on Monday and Patient everybody's like, one, I don't babe. remember anything she's taught oh, us. No. I don't, I don't even how do I get in? How do I log in? My logins, if my password doesn't work, you know, every little thing, every little thing. And we, people were, people were wanting to cry and we had, you know, a couple near meltdowns. We had some, you know, just man, drama, drama, drama. And, <laughs> you know, I'll, I'll tell you like 
I love my team. I mean, they're great. And, and, you know, I've got like some young, why are we kind doing this? Why are we doing this, Dr. Rogers? <laughs> Exactly. And then I've got, I know. <laughs> and then I've got these, these ladies that have been there a lot longer and they're, they're wonderful. And they've made it through transition of, you know, we went from uh, paper charts to paperless. Oh wow. We went from film to digital. Oh man. We went to, you know, comb beam CT. We've done all these things, what you know, that we, and, and they've really, and they've really done well, but man, this is the hardest one for them because that only software they've known for all this time has been the one software. And so, hmm. I mean, we're now three days into it, and I mean, it's gotten a little. It's Dude, gotten you need better. A tranquilizer, don't you? I I need some kind of like nitrous plumbed into the ventilation system or something because it is like rough. Honestly, but, though, how what's going on? Like, is it more staffing issues, more team issues, or is it actual like hiccups in the software? It it's nothing wrong with the software at all. I mean, the software's been so the really transition completely... from like database to this new database has been how good would yeah. you say? Seamless. Oh I mean, wow, we that's pretty had awesome, dude. So far, so far, we've not the only issue we had, <clears throat> and it was very minor, was that some of the uh, database that XDR radiography looks at in Open Dental to pull the patient number to bridge over to XDR. There are a couple of patients where it was off by one digit. So like we just, but that was easy. All we did do is go right into yeah, XDR and change it. So we've really had, you know, everything come through so far. So I have no complaints at all. I mean, Open Dental's done exactly what they said they would do. We had no issues with the conversion. So I'm happy. I think more of it is just, it's new, it's different. Um, but I definitely would, would like to be in Vermont this week with well. you. Uh, while everybody figures it out. Hey, so. you know, and what's great, John, is that a week from um, this coming Thursday, you mm. and I are getting on a plane and we're heading to Scottsdale, Arizona, and we're going to bring to you guys another great interview from uh, one of the great people at Spear Education that is, uh, a, I'm just excited about that interview. Yeah. I'm excited yeah. about... Here's what I'm excited about is I'm excited about too about diving into sleep education um, yeah. at Spear, and we're gonna yep. we're gonna really really do some. You know, you guys, we <laughs> haven't talked much about sleep because we want to know so much about it because we feel like that it could be one of those things that you guys need to understand about too. Uh, because the more we've treated uh, TMD, uh, the more we mm -hmm. found that there are sleep issues with our patients that is, is just prevalent more than I ever thought possible. So yeah. I'm excited about yeah, that. We're, yeah. We're going to be able to, I think it's going to be a question for us. And we've talked about this as, you know, how much of this will we want to incorporate daily into our practice in terms of treatment and getting into this, carving out a space for this in our practice, or will it just be something that will help us to know, you know, who we can treat, and who we can't, you know, if we see somebody that we think they've got some issues with sleep apnea, should we restore them like we're used to restoring them? You know, so there's some big questions out there. I think it's going to be a great time. Well, now that we've uh, kind of given you guys a little bit of what's coming up, uh, let's get right into what we're going to be talking about tonight. And really, this is a continuation of our series that we've been doing um, on endo. And, uh, you know, endonic... Uh, this, this whole topic, this series of topics has turned really into more uh, as we've gone on because you know, every time Wes and I get together and we talk about it, there's more to it that we really want to spend time on because this is a topic that takes a lot. So we really want to continue. Last time we got to the point where we had gotten into the tooth, we'd accessed the tooth, we'd gotten good isolation. And so today we really want to go on to kind of the next step in the process. You know, So you've, you've opened the tooth up, great isolation. You can see your canals. So what in the world do you do next? And so Wes, I think what we should start with, and we're going to try to do this show just like we did last time of kind of what we do. And we're going to try to back it up where we can with some studies. So Wes, kind of tell me, once you get to that point, what's the next thing that you do and, and why? So the next thing I do is just try to establish, um, you know, I don't, I, you know, I think the whole idea is that in dental school, we are pushed 
to get your working link, get your working link, get your working link. That's the first thing yeah. you need to do. And, and, yeah. and to some of that extent, that's what we're trying to do is to try to get a working link so that we can, you know, determine what our master apical file needs to be. Um, and, uh, for me, you know, yeah, I get the tin file out and I stick it in a tooth. Now the question is like, do I immediately, you know, John and I talked to this in pre-production, do I immediately, you know, start by opening up the coronal portion and the only time that I open up the coronal portion of the of the you know of a canal is if I get binding with a tin file and mm-hmm. so you know I know it's so you know one of those things it's kind of backwards is that the whole idea of doing this crown down technique and where you do get binding most of the time is in this coronal third. Now, what we're going to tell you here at the Dental Guys is that there are a, a bunch of different ways to, you know, a, you know, open up that coronal third. And John and I went from, you know, the beginning whenever we were in school to using, you know, gates, two, three, and four size files to where I used to use uh, what John is still using now, which is a great file. John, you're using the Pro Taper uh, S- was it SX file, right? The SX, yeah, yeah that's yeah, what I use a for great opening file. Out Chrome. And what mm-hmm. I'm using right now is I'm using um, so basically I'm using a Wave One or some type of you know whatever my master file size for the canal is going to be. So if I'm in a really small canal, I'm using a yellow. If I'm in a regular size canal, I'm using a red. If I'm in a really large canal, I'm maybe using a black and I'm opening that coronal third up. It doesn't matter really what you're doing. We want you guys to know that it's not all about the working length. It's about thinking about where binding happens and mm. then getting into that canal system safely yeah. so that you don't block yourself out, John, because that's yeah, the whole idea I, here. Yeah, early on, you know, as as probably most of you were taught as we were, you know, like Wes said, get to the working length. That's job number one. You want to get that working length radiograph. You know, that's that was the first step in school. And what would happen, I think it's why a lot of people get turned off from endo. I really do. I think that that one uh, really mistake of teaching that is really caused a, a big problem because the truth is, is that many times uh, you're going to put a number 10 file down into that canal and it's going to hit you're going to get, you know, halfway down and you're going to hit a curve. And now you got to think about your 10 files. Say it bends distal. Well, your access may, you know, you may be holding it where it's bent on the coronal mesial. So now you've got a bend halfway down your file and then you may encounter a little bit more curvature. Now your file may be bent two or three different directions. It's not going to efficiently pass down through that canal. So if you, if you just stop when your number 10 file hits resistance and you say, all right, I'm hitting resistance. Say I'm halfway down the canal and I'm hitting resistance. I used to just try to work my way down because you sit there and you try to actually work. You watch wind and you're doing all this stuff. And sometimes you get down and sometimes it's fine, but you can block out, you know, one of the techniques that I was taught early on in school and I didn't even know what I was doing was to actually step up to like a 35 or a 40 to 45 size hand file. Okay, and basically go in there and use that hand file to open up that coronal third. And and then there was a professor that stepped in and she was like, look, start learning to use your gates. And, you know, I've went away from gates because they're gates and and I hate when they break, because if you use gates long enough and they will break. And not that I haven't been able to retrieve gates, and I think gates are still a viable solution. But again, we're not here to teach you what or tell you what to buy. You know, what we want to teach you is that or tell you that is that you need to stop for just a second before you just start watch winding all the way down and back up Mm -hmm. and open up that coronal third of that canal. I think there's good signs And then all your files, yeah, and then all your files having to do, all your number 10 files having to do after that is just work down into that apical one half or apical one third. The most third. frustrating thing is blocking yourself out. Mm-hmm. You know that is the most frustrating thing is to get in there and then now you can't get through the sludge that you've created. You know, John and I yeah. we talked about that sludge a little bit. And one thing that John and I both do, and and 
we don't really, he didn't really know we did it, but it's like if we have a really bad case where there's a ton of irreversible pulpitis and there's a lot of blood coming up out of there, maybe not the first thing you want to do is put irrigants in the canal or put sodium hypochlorite. If you put sodium hypochlorite in a canal, you have to realize that it's going to turn everything that's vital, that vital pulp tissue, into just thousands and thousands of particles and that in itself could be a problem and and could block you out so a lot of times we're extirpating some of that t- tissue out of there to get some of that stuff out of there some of that pulp mm-hmm. tissue some of that you know some of the stuff that's down in there we can clean that out really good and then open up that coronal third a little bit with an sx file or in my case maybe you're using one of your your uh, wave one files or maybe gt mm-hmm. gtx maybe even a profile um, so something like that, a file yeah. to open up the coronal third. But one thing we don't want people to do is we don't want people to proceed with their file system, their rotary file system, until they've reached patency, John. That's what yeah, we're Yeah, I mean, to the rotary you. file should never go where a hand file has not S- gone. Say that again, John. Why? Yeah, rotary file should never go where a hand file has not been because... You have no pathway. You have no glide path where you know that you can advance your file. And even though that tip of the rotary may be flexible, yep. it may be small, it may be able to negotiate. And you may get lucky uh, if you're using uh, you know, a brand new file and a sharp tip and blah, blah, blah. But the truth is you're taking every single time you're taking a risk of separation. And I think if you just hear nothing else from this episode, if you get to this point and you say, I'm going to disregard both of those things. Like I'm not going to open the coronal third. If I get my, if I, if I bind up my 10 file, I'm going down, I'm going, going to link. Down. And then, <laughs> and, or, or you say, I'm going to go ahead and put my rotary in there, even though I can't get my 10 file to length. Uh, I heard a guy just the other day, somebody that I know, he's like, yeah, I couldn't get my hand file down. So I went ahead and just got my, my uh, rotary. And I just saw, I just was going to see if I could get down there. Oh and I was like, goodness. you're going to see if you could get down there. What do you, you know, that is the, if you don't do either of those things or both those things, just get ready for failures, get ready for separated files and instruments. And I think that if there's one tip that I've learned that's really changed everything for me, it's, it's, you got to stop trying to get to working length right away, back up, open up the tooth a little more mm-hmm. and then get your file down to length. Let the the rotary do the work that it's supposed to on the coronal. Let your hand file only work one miracle at a time, one problem at a time. Mm-hmm. And and I think that that's where we get down to where we can actually see ourselves getting into many more canals. So so Wes, you get your you get your coronal opened up if you need. Now you may put your ten file in there, go right to length. Right. Now how do you know, Wes, that you? are at length how well, the f- what what's the way that you're going to figure well, now, that out now nowadays because of my ct machine before i was estimating off of periapicals or mm-hmm. some type of x you know two-dimensional x-ray now i'm actually tracing my canals with a polyline um, in my software and i've been doing that uh, routinely for the last you know, year and a half. And I found that that really kind of helps me get an estimation of where I need to be and how close I am because I use a root ZX, you know, some type of apex locator that's going to allow me to sense the working link. Now, you know, should we be shooting a verification x-ray? And Mm. I know from research that 20% of the time that the anatomical apex of a tooth um, is not the radiographic apex of a tooth mm-hmm. and we need to be relying upon our you know root zx so john and i both um you know don't shoot working link shots with uh periapicals now yeah as a, long as we get a solid reading right so on our apex one locator. of the things that you'll have happen with you know, apex locators is that sometimes you'll get some crazy readings. So if you have a blunderbust apex or a very large apex, maybe step up to a larger file and you might get a more truer reading. Uh, There's been a lot of controversy over whether you should be using irrigants with apex locators in the years past. That's been completely debunked. Um, 
And even recently, I uh, looked up a study, and it showed the same thing. Last year, there was a study that talked about do irrigants affect apex location, and it does not within significant, you know, uh, study there. So, you know, if you don't get a working link with an apex locator, you need to start thinking about shooting a radiograph. And, John, you know, that happens occasionally. You know, maybe sure. once or twice a year we, we have to throw up, you know, bend the handy damn back or take the frame off and take an x-ray. And that's hard to sure. do. It's not easy. And yeah. and I'm not saying we're taking shortcuts with apex locators because we're not. Um, we still have to occasionally take a traditional x-ray. i tell you something that's helped us and this is something interesting, I didn't even talk about this, is that we have a Nomad in our office, which is a portable, um, you know, x-ray tube head. And that mm-hmm. has been awesome for this particular instance because we can position that Nomad, it seems like, a little bit better than we can to get that shot. Because you know how sometimes it's really hard to kind of use the XCP and the, the mm-hmm. traditional arm coming off of the wall, that kind of thing, whenever you're trying to shoot x-ray. The Nomad's actually made that kind of nice. I'd say that would help. And, and uh, one thing I'll just add, um, just kind of as a little clinical tip on, like Wes said, we don't really want to tell you what to buy, but there is one product that I've found that has helped me with getting down to working length in some of these more difficult canals. And that is, um, the C plus file. Mm. Uh, and there are a couple different companies that make them. Dense Ply was the first one, I believe. Uh, but I've used a couple different company, uh, and what they are, they're just a little stiffer, version of a K file. So it's a K it's still, Mm -hmm. yeah, still a cutting file. Uh, but it has just a stiffer, uh, metallurgy. So it's not designed to go around crazy, crazy curves. That's not its point. Uh, but it's designed to just resist, uh, bending, especially if you're trying to pre-curve your, uh, files to find curvatures and things. It just doesn't, uh, buckle as easily as you're trying to get down and work that apical. So that's just one product I want to throw in there. If you haven't ever tried, they have C files and C plus files and the C plus, uh, Cliff Ruddle talked about them a few years ago. So I tried them out and I've had them in my kit. In fact, I don't even have regular K files in my kit. I just have six, eight, 10, uh, uh, that are C plus. And I guess my fifteens and twenties are regular K's, but all of my files I'm actually using for negotiating canals are the C plus, And I've been really happy with them. Like Wes said, I don't take these x-rays either unless absolutely necessary. So, so you get into the, the tooth, you get down to working length. You've, you've gotten to where you feel comfortable with your apex locator reading. You've taken a radiograph if necessary. Uh, you feel good about where you are. Um, what about patency, Wes? What, what is patency? When do we try to achieve patency? Why do we try to achieve patency? What is it all about? So patency is actually whenever the file goes out the end of the apex. And so we've established working length, but one thing that I always like to do is to take the 10 and I take the 15 beyond the working length. Now what we're doing there is we're making sure that we are free and clear of any debris in the apex. Now, John, what happens if we don't have free and clear movement of debris in and around the apex, we get blocked out. That's what we call being blocked out. Now, if that happens to you and you can't get that unclogged, get the pipes unclogged, well, you're at risk for failure of your root canal. And, And I think that's kind of one of these things where it doesn't matter whether you're using a C type file, whether you're using a stainless steel Patterson brand or Salvin brand K file, if you do not get patency or you do not get out the apex with that those files in the beginning, you're at running a risk of not thoroughly cleansing the canal. I don't couldn't care what kind of rotary system you're using. I don't care. It doesn't yeah. matter. That you terminal have to- one millimeter or so you just don't know for sure well, unless you put unless you in, unless you touch it you just don't know for sure especially in these necrotic cases yes, where so... we know that we've got apical infection mm-hmm. um, we definitely don't want to leave that area and, and, and i've even had situations where um, i go to establish patency with a 10 for instance and you withdraw that 10 and here comes the pus yeah you know it's a, you get down in there and you allow drainage of any 
uh, uh, well, infectious what is a material and, out of the what tooth. What does a thickened PDL show you on an x-ray? You know, what is a periapical radiolucency? You know, mm-hmm. what is a periapical cyst? What are these things you're seeing, you know, on an x-ray? They are areas that need to be opened up and drained. And one way to drain those and one way to seal off the route of infection or the source of infection is to get it clean. And that's through the tooth. You're doing drainage yeah. and curatage and you're going to give that that bone the best chance of survival by cleansing the tooth. Um, yeah. So, yeah. So I think we get, we definitely, I usually use just a 10 uh, for patency. Yeah, I think that I, fine but there too, has been, you know. there has been, you know, some, you know, controversy on, well, we should go ahead and work up this to a 15 or a 20. I don't think that's, you know, to me, get 10, 15, get it mm-hmm. patent and get it patent often. You know, that's one thing we want to make sure that you guys are doing is continually making sure that you are to your working length and that you're recapitulating with that 10 or 15 through the working length yeah. and making sure that so, it stays patent. Go ahead. So you get the patency. Now our next step, you know, for me is I'm getting, I want to get to a fifth, ideally a 15 uh, hand file before I'm really working rotary. I think we can do it with a mm-hmm. 10 but I think that 15 has been shown because most of our rotary files start uh, with the tip that's a 20 size. Right. And so I feel it's uh, you're probably safest uh, to get to a 15. Now, there are some files, some rotary files that have been introduced uh, more recently that are a 15 size. And uh, I've used, I've tried a couple of them. Uh, Path files are one. Um, there's, uh, there's another one called ProGlider. Uh, that's out. Uh, and the whole idea with the, actually, I think one of those replaced the other and I can't remember which was which one of them came first. Uh, and then the other came, uh, there was also uh, a vortex blue 1506 file that uh, Steve Buchanan was using for a while. But I think that, uh, what I found and for me, and I'm sure there's people that use them all the time. I just like going to a 15 hand file because I felt like I had control of the case. Plus, I mean, they cost, you know, cents versus Pennies. yeah yeah versus dollars and dollars and so it really didn't make sense for me uh, i just like the idea of the hand file because i know that's what i'm going to recapitulate with anyway i don't want to have to well, switch my rotary always just trying to, to recapitulate. sell us the next great thing you know <laughs> right. it seems right. like that, that we're always trying to make things just you know just this is the greatest thing you know and right. i think just slow down for a minute Stick yeah, because I think a lot of people, what they're really doing too with those is they're using them like we were saying not to use them. Exactly. They're, they're trying, they're saying, oh, this is a path file, mm. so it'll create a path for me. Uh, and, and so just be careful, be very careful. Uh, you know, with the marketing. So we, we, get a, we get to our 15, and now we're going to go ahead and start using a rotary system. Now, this episode is not going to be <laughs> about rotary instrumentation. You Everybody's going to be like, oh, man, when are you guys going to actually talk about files? Don't worry. We will talk about files, but we really want to make sure that we really have done our research on this. So we're still we're still working on that. We want to make sure that we're really ready for that show. But at this point, we want to talk about, okay, we know that you're going to use a rotary system. And right. the truth is, we'll kind of spoil that, that, that file episode, that the truth is, is that there's a ton of good rotary systems yeah. out there that work incredibly well, that can instrument the canal very, very well. So it's not as important, I think, exactly what system you use. I think what is important, though, is that we're properly cleaning the canal, that we're instrumenting the canal, and we're irrigating the canal. And I think there's, you know, one of the things there's been a lot of controversy about is irrigation, Wes. I mean, mm-hmm. there's been a ton of controversy about what should we be putting into the canal? Man, there's what so much stuff not on this be that's putting, like... Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, it all started back in the day with, you know... What what is going to actually uh, disinfect the canal was not really thought about. It was more uh, just you know we didn't even know about what bacteria were in the canal. Right. Now it's about not just cleaning the debris, not just disinfecting, but but really looking at the bacteria, trying to create a, a totally you know aseptic uh, field, which we know is kind of impossible to completely right. disinfect the canal. But we want to make sure that we're using irrigants that have the best chance. And and one of the things, too, that I think w- just before we get into the big discussion of irrigants is what about lubrication? Because, you know, lubrication 
some people will use it in conjunction with irrigants. Some people will not use it at mm -hmm. all. Um, what we were finding as we looked into this is, you know, I was, I was initially taught in school. We had a couple of these irrigant or these, I'm sorry, these, uh, uh lubricants that most people have seen like RC prep. That's yeah, the thing and in the we, little, like little, like squeeze like a bottle, jar. Do a little jar yeah. or you just yeah. dip a little bit and put it on your endo ring and that kind of thing. Yeah. So, and yeah. it sure feels like it should work, right? Because you look at well, this I mean, stuff, you you're know, like, looks like grease. Hey, you know, right. Let's lube I mean, it up. Don't you, it's got to be better. Right. Don't, you know? Yeah. Don't you want to? Yeah. Wouldn't that make things better? You're going to have your file go in there more easily, clean things out more easily. Mm -hmm. And then even some of these had EDTA. Right. Uh, they called it a viscous chelator, you know, and so you'd actually put it in. And I think that we'll say that there's been some conflicting results on these. You know, we, Wes and I read a, a lot of studies and basically what these studies kind of said was in general, there are some problems with the paste style lubricants that they tend to produce a little bit more torque on your rotary, a little bit more torque. And I think we think that's because, you know, you think about a certain types of rotary files, like the radially landed ones where they're in contact mm -hmm, with the, mm -hmm. the canal to keep it centered and you put something kind of viscous in there, you're, you're going to drag against it a little bit and, and exert some torque on the outside of the, of the uh, canal versus with an active like cutting file, like say yeah. endo sequence or one of those, maybe the paste ones didn't seem to be quite as bad, but in general, we the studies were kind of supported that, you know, hypochlorite is a great hey, lubricant let's and get it, it doesn't man. produce that torque. So get out for the me bleach. and I think, yeah. <laughs> So Just for me and Wes, where's yeah, the so for us and I, we, we don't really use the, the lubricants and, and we think there's some people that may find they're a little bit more effective. It depends on what file system you're using. I think you need yeah. to go read up and say, okay, well, what type of file system do I have? And what and produces my the file less, system, least amount of friction? Yeah. And least amount of friction. Will it us, help me? Will it hurt me? For us right now, we're using sodium hypochlorite. Uh, Clorox, yeah. you know, we, you know, you, you know, the main thing is, is that you need to be irrigating with some type of sodium hypochlorite um, continually. Um, we know, and we'll talk a little bit about this later on, is during rotary instrumentation, you need to keep the subs, you know, you're cleaning and shaping these canals. It's amazing to me with 6.0 magnification, John, mm -hmm. how much debris the first pass with rotary endo. It's mind-boggling. I went from 3.5 yeah. to a 6 o guys. You know, and what you see is how long you t you have to irrigate after that first file that goes mm. in there, that first rotary file. The amount of stuff coming up out of that canal is unbelievable. And I irrigate that first time every time until I see clear solution. Because what we want to do is we want to keep all of those particles suspended. And so sodium mm -hmm. hypochlorite is the way to do that. Now, so concentration, though, concentration is important. Has, John. Had, there's been a lot of people that have talked about that. So what is the target concentration well, that you're looking for? I think we need to be between 2.5 and 5, you know, percent. And so John, he buys the professional grade Clorox, um, mm -hmm. which is about what, 8 percent. And you dilute it's about 8.25. 8. Yeah. yeah. And then we cut it and then we cut it 50 50. Right. So we decrease down to roughly four or you can do what Wes does, right? Where you just get the stuff that's at, right at 5.25 yeah, and exactly. just use it straight up. Yeah, but make sure you're using the, the right stuff because there, if you get the 2.5, it'll work. It's just it's fine. But the problem is, is that if you dilute that, then you're down below 2.5%. And we know from some research, that's not going to kill mm -hmm. all your bugs. Yeah. But yeah. Um, we know there are some other irrigants that you could use that would allow you to get those bugs. But yeah. we recommend that you need to get something between 2.5 and 5 percent. And uh, there's and no there's been discussion, too, about, you know, OK, mm -hmm. well, if I use a higher concentration, am I going to have more of a risk of causing harm to the patient? Right. Um, and, you know. Man, well, if you if side you shoot, ported cannulas, all I know is like people. I don't know what they're doing out there. If you're not using side ported cannulas, yeah, but you're yeah. asking for it. And and, and yeah. here's the thing: is every year some resident, you know, um, or not every year, but I mean, like occasionally we'll have a resident that I watch start to do, or they'll talk about doing endo, and they put positive pressure on oh, that man. cannula, and you're just asking 
asking for yeah. studying you're hyperchloridemia. You're not giving an injection, people. You know, yeah. you are constantly keeping that needle moving up and down. You're never having it bind. It doesn't matter if you use two and a half percent, man. If you go in there and give an injection of hypochlorite into you're the trouble. canal, you're going to have necrotic necrosis. You're going to have an accident. It's going to be bad. These are really bad. Yeah, and these so really don't Very don't painful. think that just because you use a lower concentration that you're that you're safe from that. Yes, it probably will cause more tissue destruction with a higher percentage, but if you're properly irrigating where you're not applying positive pressure like Wes said, it's really not an issue. And while we're on that topic, let's just briefly talk Wes about a piece of technology that come came out a few years yeah. ago uh, that was designed to reduce the chances of hypochlorite accident. Now let's, we've already kind of said, oh. guys, you really shouldn't be having a problem with hypochlorite accidents. I personally have never had one uh, myself. Um, that doesn't mean I'm like awesome. I just haven't, have you ever had one, Wes? I haven't had one and I've seen it in residency, but I've not, I've seen it with our residents, but it's, and it's yeah. a nasty I mean, thing. it happens. It happens. It happens. And it's not, it's not going to, you know, kill the patient. They're no, fine. They completely resolve but they just look bad and they feel bad. Right. So you don't want to do it. But the Endovac oh, wow. was released as John, the solution. another product, right? another product. And there's a lot of people out there that just love this thing. And yes. John, tell us, you know, a little bit about this article right here that you're going to pull up. It's, yeah. Uh, yeah. And I think, you know, first of all, what Endovac is, you probably know, but if you don't know what it is, it basically is like a a uh, pump, if you will, that kind of delivers the irrigant and then it, it evacuates it back out. It's like a little vacuum pump. And so it uses your high speed suction to pull it back out constantly. So you're, you got this negative pressure that's pulling irrigant out and it's, I mean, it's cool. And it's there was cool. some, uh, initial studies showing that at, uh, at right at the apex, um, uh, down at about one millimeter from the apex, that it was a little bit more effective than just a regular needle. Uh, at three millimeters from the apex, it was not any different. So it was really at that last one millimeter. But when you look at uh, the Endovac versus what we're using, which is either a sonic or ultrasonic uh, acoustic streaming activation, basically, of your irrigant in the canal, they found that uh, there was more effectiveness with cleaning the canal with ultrasonic agitation versus endovac so to me it was like after i saw that research i thought well if if i'm gonna get this better uh cleaning with just using my endo activator that i use then endovac the only advantage of endovac is it's going to prevent a hypochlorite accident I, i'm not really worried about that I, i'm not going to buy that for that reason now if it was going to debride better maybe right. but it looks like what we're seeing is that you use ultrasonic or sonic activation, you're going to have just as good of a result, it may be better result than Endovac without having to worry about buying that piece of equipment. Right. Let's talk so, about time. You know, I think time and irrigation, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. is, is crucial. So the, the, the one thing that we've always done in our chair is that we've documented the start time yeah. on a little piece of paper of when I actually put sodium hypochlorite in the canals, okay? And once I've put them in the canals, we start a timer. Now, if it's an irreversible case, okay, we want to make sure that we're at least irrigating for 30 minutes if I'm only using sodium hypochlorite, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, I'm notice uh, uh, emphasized only. And it's very difficult to finish a root canal, It'll be completely done, in 30 minutes or less. Now, sometimes, okay, on these anterior cases, it's like uh, 10 minutes and you're done. Okay, we, right. well, we've got a solution for you if you're one of these people and you're you're wanting to kind of like, you know, make sure you're dotting your I's and crossing your T's here. Now, on necrotic cases, which we know there's uh, some good research that says we should irrigate longer with sodium hypochlorite, and that's up to 40 minutes, okay? Now, Let's say that we are one of these people that is just the ultimate ended on us. I mean, like, it's amazing, John. You're finishing your root canals, and they look beautiful. You know, they look beautiful. And most likely, you're like, man, I've been sodium hypochlorite for years, and I haven't had one problem, never a retreat necessary, none of that. But then Joe comes along, and you, you finish that root canal in five minutes. I mean, like, seal it up, 
put the core build up in it and sure enough three years goes by and this thing just comes back and on an x-ray it looks like a massive blob you know and you're like mm. oh it's a failure it's a failure well yeah it's a failure but why did it fail most likely the bugs were still there and so right. john tell us about a product that you've been using and one that i'm going to start incorporating in my practice so i can actually finish my endo maybe a little bit faster yeah, that that study that showed 40 minutes was effective uh, with um, with hypochlorite um, was pretty. Yeah, you know, that was that was pretty challenging to me. We were never taught that in school because I think we they always knew we'd be in there for like two hours. Right. So they never really told us about time. But you know, 5.25 percent at 40 minutes was effective at killing the worst bugs. And the worst bug out there that's used oftentimes in these studies is Enterococcus faecalis because it's it always like something that starts with E too. Yeah, man. It's always E. And it's, it's like, E's, it's man. the fecal stuff too. It's the fecal, it? man. It's fecal <laughs> matter. Yeah. You got some crap in there. You man. know, wait a minute. So we're up here. We were just recently fishing down the, down the lake here. And my dad and I ran out to get a couple, uh, bait things at this bait store. And we drive by this dairy farm because Vermont, you know, they've got cheese and dairy stuff. And, dude, they had a manure spreader right in front of us. And it sm oh. smelled so bad. <laughs> what else smells so bad? Yeah, the canal. <laughs> the canal. With, e with, with Enterococcus faecalis in it. <laughs> yeah. So, now, manure, so you, man, you coming out those, my canals. <laughs> that's right, dude. So, I mean, when, so when, you, when you don't, you know, when you have a failure, they found that in fail root canals, the most common bacteria that they were culturing out was this Enterococcus faecalis. So mm. we know that that's one of the targets of what we want to kill. Now, 40 minutes with 5.25% hypochlorite does it. Yep. So that's great. But what but if you're John, done? You're a star ended said, honest. You're a star. Right. You're done in five minutes. You know, I would Hang still a feather say in your hat, you're done in five. Right. I would still, for me, I still feel like I, I've set, and it's, it's kind of arbitrary. I know exactly. I'm already collecting the money before I even seal it up. Right. <laughs> but You're so um, fast, Dr. Rogers. It's amazing. It's amazing. <laughs> they're crying in the chair. Know, they're, they're thanking you. They're, thanking they're giving you like, their first warranty. This was born a root canal? You. And yeah. it was how much? <laughs> I thought, it, yeah, that's the only problem. Because you almost want to wait just so that it seems like I'm it's worth the money they're paying. I'm sitting there with an endo activator for like... 45 minutes like yeah. yeah so so what we what we've seen is the product that wes is alluding to is what's called mtad and it's basically it's a it's a product by dense fly that is a, a mixture of a tetracycline mm. uh, along with citric acid and detergents and why this was really developed was to be kind of the silver bullet hey, go for kill some oranges. Uh, to kill yeah that's right <laughs> Exactly. We've to, been talking to, too serious here for 30 minutes, man. We I know, it man. Up. We need to we need to lighten it up a little bit. Yeah. We got the poop bacteria <laughs> that we're talking about. I think we've done it. Let's kill so, some oranges. <laughs> so, <laughs> so Zest it. It's been, it's been shown that if you put MTAD in the canal for five minutes, five minutes, you're going to, and then as your final rinse, okay, so you go through your hypochlorite, I usually still want to leave it in the canal for at least 15 minutes. That's just been more but arbitrary, I mean, yeah, but I just, feel like I, I got to leave it in there for a little while because usually it just takes that long to dissolve, to dissolve the tissue. You know, like Wes was saying, you got debris coming out of there. You got those little bubble action going on. You know, it's dissolving. Mm. But once I feel like I'm at 15 studies show five minutes of MTAD final rinse with MTAD has been, is, is effective at killing Enterococcus faecalis. So it kills the bad bug in the necrotic cases or the tough bacteria. So I, I, I have started using that as my final rinse. Now, before I go to that, I and Wes and I both do this. Well, let's back up for a minute, though. Okay, There's so like, one other it, step. Yeah, there is one other step. So we've yeah. established patency. We've got yep. into our rotary instrumentation. We're recapitulating with that 10 yep. and 15 file, you know, you know, we're going in there and we're getting, making sure our patency is going on. We're sodium hypochlorite and, you know, between 2.5 and 5.25%. And then here we are, we're at the end. And, and let me just say something about rotary motors is that, you know, John and I have used auto reversing motors. We've also used, I've used air driven motors. Um, we've also used latch lock on electric hand pieces and without any auto reversing at all. And we, 
we know, and I have very, I mean, like I just told John, I was like, I think I've had less than 10 files fractured, and I do a lot of endo, and I feel bad every time it happens, but, you know, these people that are just like going, you know, they, they sell you these things that like, mm-hmm. it's going to make your endo so much better. If you have this motor, you're going to have less file fractures. Well, you really shouldn't be ha- I mean, yeah, you're going to have some files fracture. It's going to happen, right. but yeah. you don't need some special motor to do, to do root canals. You need no, a gear reducing motor. It's not about the motor. motor. It's not about the motor. Yeah. It's, not it's about just the about the sequence of events and right. making sure that you're, you're so getting your files. Now in there we've properly. reached the end of our master. We've, established our master apical file okay yep. and we're finishing up that irrigation with whatever last irrigant and we've went ahead and used our endo activator some type of ultrasonic and if you've got an endo vac you know you're using it yeah so, sure but, sure go for it but go for it but the next thing we're going to do is we're going to actually we've we've disturbed you know what have we done we've created smear layer okay and this yeah smear we, layer, got, we got we got we got we've, junk on the side of that hey, canal, listen, man. What do you do whenever you etch a tooth, John? You etching the dentin, you open up the dentinal tubules. Well, we just put we just put like gunk inside the tubes down all the way to the apex. Well, guess mm-hmm. what else we clogged up? Some lateral canals. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, these lateral canals and these tubes, they've got bacteria living in them, and we want to get that sealed up. Okay. Proper seal, proper obturation. Okay. So you're saying we need to remove the smear layer. I'm going to remove it. And Just you know how I'm going it. to do it? I'm going to use soap because that's what EDTA is. It is basically a soap. It is a chelating agent. And if you know anything about chemistry and John, I'm a chemistry major. You're a chemistry major. Yeah, it's man. so weird. We're strange. But yes, chelators, basically all they do is they surround minerals and they haul them off. Okay. So that's what we're doing is we're taking hard minerals and we're hauling them out. Okay, so you put this, you put the EDTA down in there, and there is some risk. There is some risk if you let it set in there for like five minutes. You're crazy because guess what you're doing? Right. You're chelating Weakening. the dentinal yeah. tubules, and you're you're pulling off calcium and phosphorus that doesn't need to be pulled off. All yeah. we want to do is just remove enough to open yeah. up the tubules, pull those little plugs out of there, so you get yeah. a better seal. Hey, minute, you get minute complete and a half, bacterial removal. You're good to go. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I go a minute or a minute and a half. That's fine. Yeah, you get all that out. You don't hurt the tooth. Then is the time for me for for MTAD. It's a beautiful and, day. Uh, so, so then you you got your you got your dissolution of tissue with your hypochlorite, your initial disinfection. You've got your smear layer removed. You've got your MTAD in there uh, for a final rinse. And that's important if, that you're using that needed. MTAD right there at the end. Okay, mm-hmm. because. You've opened and MTAD up the removes the smear, does remove the yeah. smear layer too. But don't rely so on it 100%. You, so. Yeah, no, I, I would agree. I, I think that it does remove the smear layer. I think that still, though, I, I've always used uh, EDTA uh, it's because practice. it's just been, yeah, it's just one of those things that it's I've always practice. done. But I, I think you could probably, you might be able to combine those two just with MTAD. But now you're in a situation where you can obturate this canal. And we're going to get into that in the next episode. But let's talk about. Let's talk about, there. it's interesting because everyone has been trying to come up with the best way of doing all this. You know, we've had discussion of other irrigants, so let's talk a little bit about that. Let's talk a little bit about lasers as yeah. a disinfectant, as comparing that to these different, uh, let's let's just go right, let's go right into lasers, Wes. Yeah. What, what's the current understanding of using lasers as, a, as an alternative to these irrigants? Listen, it's just not there. The research isn't there. It doesn't show any benefit right now to use a laser in a root canal. Now, I know a lot of people are swearing by this stuff. We're trying to find reasons to use lasers. You all go back and listen to our, you know, listen to our LANAP episode about soft tissue laser therapy and perio, but we're trying to find reasons to justify $80,000. Right now, there have been some studies showing that you can get tissue out of there. That's you right. You can remove the smear layer. But John, but, again, but you an, can't, how are you going to get it around a curve? <laughs> how are you going to get the laser? Tr- it's uh, again, another tool that canals. you don't really need. You don't yeah. really need this because there are other things that will provide right. you with a, with a d- r- result that we know is scientifically supported. And I'm not saying lasers are bad because I have right. a laser 
that I use for certain things, but not root canals. But right. here's the thing is that we know with root canals, it's not that big a deal. But John, what about chlorhexidine? Because all these people talk about, well, on these bigger cases where I'm afraid I'm going to get sodium hypochlorite out the apex, yep. I want to use chlorhexidine instead of sodium hypochlorite. Is that bad or good? Right. And this is, this is definitely good to talk about because chlorhexidine is good stuff for some things in dentistry. Uh, definitely has low toxicity. It's not going to get out and cause, an, uh, you know, the, this destruction of tissue. Some of you like out you there are probably with, jaded because you've had sodium hypochlorite incidents where a patient's yeah. face looks like it's going to fall off. Right. You know? And you're and, freaking out. And now you're going to use chlorhexidine for yeah. the rest of your life. So, Why is that bad, so, John? Right. So chlorhexidine does kill some bacteria. But the problem with chlorhexidine is it doesn't dissolve tissue. It does not mm. dissolve tissue. And so you cannot use chlorhexidine as your only irrigant for sure. And it also does not kill all bacteria. Now, hypochlorite doesn't maybe kill all bacteria either. We were talking about that with maybe MTAD being a solution, but it's not going to it's not going to kill all the bacteria. It's not going to dissolve tissue. So it's not going to penetrate well into places. It doesn't remove the smear layer. Uh, so it's not really what you want to be using. Now, there are people that will advocate, and I've heard people talk about advocating it as like a final rinse where they'll do hypochlorite, dissolve the tissue, use chlorhexidine. I've seen some conflicting studies showing that maybe there are certain bacteria that it does get more than what hypochlorite does, and hypochlorite gets some that it doesn't maybe do as much. But in the end, you've got two problems. One is you've got that doesn't kill all the bugs. The second thing is... It also precipitates out in solution when you put it together with hypochlorite. So you also have to do sterile saline in between uh, using it and using hypochlorite or else you get this kind of nasty precipitate. And really the only chlorhexidine that I've ever seen be truly effective at killing bacteria in the root canal is using it in between like a two-visit root canal situation with 2% gel. Now right. that does have a good antimicrobial activity. And I guess when that you really brings up some hydroxide. You know, is is the two root canal visit dead or are there still reasons for us to do that? So cuz mm. cuz there are cases that you and I talk about rarely that we have to do two visits on. And really yeah. the only reason that we're doing a two visit root canal is, on an adult is for someone that has pus or excess bleeding. Now there are yep. ways to stop this intraoperatively um, a lot of times. Yeah, but John times. and I have went back to pretty much what we've been always taught is to use calcium hydroxide. Um, mm -hmm. Calcium yeah, hydroxide. Yeah, you got to close the tooth up. You got to, yeah, it is. Calcium hydroxide is an amazing material when it comes to intra, you know, intra appointment root canal medicament. Um, time and time again, I've used it and it works. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, the question is, well, how long, John, how long do we go between the, the visits when we put some hypo sodium hypochlorite in there? Yeah. And I, and two weeks, uh, I think one week is minimum. One week. Minimum. Uh, yep. Yeah. Two weeks. And, and I, and there are some good studies to show this. I think one week is kind of the minimum two weeks is usually what I do. Um, and it has been shown to be effective. One thing that a lot of people don't know is they think because calcium hydroxide is kind to the pulp when you use it as a pulp, uh, like a liner, like Dical, mm -hmm. they think it's biocompatible. It is not. By it's very toxic because <laughs> it's, it's very alkaline. It's you so think bad. about what? Why does it kill bugs? It kills bugs because it's, it's pH. Basic. Is, I think it's like eleven, 11. or something. Yeah, it's so and bad. so you're throwing this stuff in there. You might as well be throwing like hydro hydrofluoric acid down in there. It's just the basic. Uh, aside to that, so hey, if just, you extrude it outside yeah, the tooth, you got to be careful yeah, with this stuff. Just take and butter up, you know, your MAF, you know, cone yeah. or something like that, a, a paper point. Paper point. Just, just butter yep. it up a little bit and scrape the canals. Make sure you get it down to the apex. Yeah. Don't, don't shove it out the apex, you know, because you're right. going to really hurt somebody. Um, yeah. So put it in there. If you have a weeping canal where you can't get it to stop, uh, then I think that calcium hydroxide is the way to go. And you can mix it with chlorhexidine gel if you so desire, mm -hmm. you know, but these are so few and far between. I probably have, I don't know, out of a hundred cases, I might have one, you know, that's that you have to do in two visits, yeah. maybe two. Um, and, and it's usually these teeth that are draining uh, pus and you can't get it to stop. 
okay, I, I can see using it. But it, a lot of people thought that two appointments would reduce pain, but it really turns out that two appointments doesn't reduce pain at all. In fact, sometimes it increases pain because calcium hydroxide is not the kindest thing to the tissue. Hey, I think so the I thing, think it's important. The, the thing about today's episode is simplifying your endodontic procedure and mm -hmm. not overcomplicating it because, you know, there are some things on the market that make us want to <laughs> overcomplicate. I know where you're going. John, gentle Don't wave. you want to spend $65,000, I think In it fact, is, on I, I want you guys to check out the Gentle Wave website because it's pretty yeah. sweet. Because it makes I mean, you it's feel beautiful. like it's a beautiful site. It's a beautiful site. It's like Invisalign. You know, you go yeah. to the Gentle Wave website and it's like, dude, I want to be a provider for Gentle Wave because they're going to send me patients because yes. I'm a Gentle Wave provider. Now, yes. how much money oh, do man. I have to spend, John, for this machine? I think it's sixty five grand. I, I remember five thousand CRA and I got I, I should have looked this up. CRA did a thing on it a few months ago where they had like an initial you know, review. I'm sure and, there's some and, service fee too, just like there is with something else. Oh, you know it. Cause it looks, it looks a lot like, uh, like a hard tissue laser. If you look at the machine, yeah. it's gigantic. And basically what this thing does is you put it over the tooth. It's got this little stabilization thing that you mm. put. So it hold it like creates like a suction over the tooth and then it, it, hey, it, it's it cool. will. Okay. Let's just it say is cool. this. this. It'll is irrigate. Like cool it applies stuff. negative pressure. It puts all the right irrigants in for all the right amount of time. You can like I get the feeling you can just leave the room with your assistant there holding this little <laughs> suction thing in there, and it kind of does all the irrigation John, for you. You don't I even mean, need you don't need anything with this thing. You just hook this up to the patient, and it finishes your procedure. I, I think you just you don't even need to come to the office anymore. You just you just you just you the patient walks in and it says hello. Somebody I'm asked me that. I think it was my mother in law the other day. She was like, "Hey, do you think there'll be a time in your career where we just won't need you anymore?" And I'm like, thanks, Pam. Gentle wave, baby. Gentle wave Gentle is wave. here. You walk in and it like it comes rolling into the room on its Gentle own Dental power. Has Gentle wave goes, now. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, I'm Gentle Wave, and I'll be doing your root canal today for Dr. Mullins. Right. So I, I, I mean, it now again, it, there have been some studies showing Gentle Wave works. Yeah. It's pretty cool. It's but awesome. let's just say here that <laughs> I would still, I think we need to say that we've got a good system if you just follow the rules. You're going to get good success if you follow some of these irrigation, uh, of, uh, you know, recommendations we've given you based on the research. But go check out Gentle Wave because it is interesting to see: is this a future of endodontics? Is Maybe. this where endodontics is going into more automation? Hey, and if you're from Gentle Wave and you want to contact the dental guys and tell us why, Gentle yeah. Wave is the next make a thing. case, man. Make, make the a case. case because if I, it really I is that, that good. conversation, I am really interested in it. Because it is cool. I like technology. You know, it's cool. But. Yeah. But. I think they'll send us both a free one. Don't oh, you yeah. think? Oh, yeah. Just a, a sample. Do you want to be a sponsor? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. John, this oh, has man. been another great stuff. episode. And we don't have time for sealing and filling. Yeah. You know, no. that's. We're um, getting there. We're, we're getting, getting there. there. But I think, you know, you guys, you have to understand is endodontics is a whole, you know, a whole host of materials and it's expensive when you open up the endodontic treatment kit in my office the girls like spend 10 minutes opening up this whole room oh yeah you know it's yeah. a lot and it's a lot to clean up and that's why we're spending a lot of time on it say so, hey, listen mm -hmm. um, if you're listening to the dental guys and you like hearing what we're talking about we need you to go right now to our facebook and twitter and give us a shout out we need you to go to itunes and give us five stars we love our five star rating we love hearing from you we love hearing like that was a great episode keep keep it coming we get these it seems like Every other day, if not every day, we have someone commenting or telling us how much they appreciate the dental guys. And we want to hear what you guys think about your root canals and the success that you're getting. You know, we didn't talk about, you know, sealers and fillers yet. That's coming up. I know you guys will have questions about file systems. File oh, systems. Man. There's so many things that we could discuss on this show. And we just love talking this. I think I think today we've laid out some clear evidence, but to, it's really important that you that you check us out on Facebook and you give us a heads up, give us a like, 
and and tell your friends about the dental guys. Tell other dentists about the dental guys. And uh, we heard recently about one of our listeners out there that he's requiring his team members now to listen to some of our shows so that he can get them on the same page as a young dentist mm-hmm. of what he's wanting to achieve in his practice. And a shout out to him for wanting to take it to the next level because that's what yeah, that's John cool. and I are all about is being humble trying to surround yourself with great minds, listen and being open-minded. As we talked about today in one of our conversations with some of our some of our up-and-coming great clinicians and um, and you know just just you know listening to good research and then figuring it out too about what's going to work in your hands because we want to do good proven things, but we also want to find out what works good in your hands and be predictable, not just anecdotal. I want to be predictable in my uh, quest to be a great dentist because this is the pursuit of great dentistry, and uh, John and I are are wanting to take things to the next level uh, in our practices, as I know you are. So for Wes and John, we are the Dental Guys. (music) 